as we continue our meditations in this Lenten season, we are continuing our Sunday series on that uh, theme of truths spoken by Jesus' enemies, but they were veiled truths. They didn't realize what they themselves were saying. Let us pray. Jesus, I will ponder now on thy holy passion. With thy spirit me endow for such meditation. Grant that I, in love and faith, may the image cherish of thy suffering, pain, and death, that I may not perish. If my sins give me alarm and my conscience grieve me, let thy cross my fear disarm. Peace of conscience give me. Grant that I may trust in thee and thy holy passion. If his Son so loveth me, God must have compassion. Amen. We sing hymn 363 to our Redeemer's glorious name. Please follow the order of service as it is printed in our service bulletin. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, we are sinful by nature and have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and actions but we are sorry for our transgressions and pray you of your bountiful mercy to be gracious and merciful unto us. Forgive us for Jesus' sake, renew us by your spirit and lead us in the way everlasting. Amen. Jesus Christ is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We are forgiven. With boldness and confidence, we may approach the throne to find grace to help in time of need. 
in the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, be merciful as you look upon your people, that by your great goodness we may live under your direction and protection in both body and spirit. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, both now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. For our Old Testament lesson this morning, we turn to Isaiah's prophecy, that chapter of Isaiah where he takes us to the cross and reveals to us how Jesus suffered and died for us and our sins. We read from Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 6. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. For our passion history, we continue to read from, um, from the book, The Christ of the Gospels, where we have the passion history as it is recorded from the four evangelists Today we read on page 187 and 188 for those who have copies of this book. We return to the high priest's palace for, well, an illegal night meeting of the high Jewish council. So Simon Peter was following Jesus at a distance. Another disciple also was following him. That disciple was known to the high priest, and he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Jesus was standing outside the door. But Peter, um, excuse me, but Peter was standing outside the door. So the other disciple, whom the high priest knew, went out and talked to the girl who watched the door and brought Peter into the courtyard of the high priest. The slaves and the servants who were standing around had lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had made a heap of burning coals because it was cold. As they sat together and warmed themselves, Peter also stood and sat with the attendants, warming himself at the fire. He wanted to see how this would end. Then the high priest asked Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken publicly to the world, Jesus answered him. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple where all the Jews meet, and I haven't said anything in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard me. They know what I said to them. When he said this, one of the attendants who was standing near Jesus slapped his face. Is that how you answer the high priest, he asked. If I said anything wrong, Jesus answered him, tell me what was wrong. But if I told the truth, why do you slap me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. All the ruling priests, elders, and men of the law had been called together at the home of Caiaphas, the high priest. 
the ruling priests and the whole Jewish council tried to get false testimony against Jesus in order to kill him, but they couldn't find any. While many came forward to give false testimonies against him, their testimonies did not agree. At last, two men came forward and gave false testimonies against him, saying, We heard him say, I can tear down the temple of God and build it in three days. I will tear down this temple made by human hands and in three days build another that is not made by human hands. But even on this point, did their test, but not even on this point did their testimonies agree. Then the high priest stepped forward. Don't you have anything to say to this? He asked Jesus. What is it that they are testifying against you? So Jesus kept silent and didn't answer. Then the high priest said to him, Swear by the living God and tell us, Are you the promised Savior, the Son of God, the Blessed One? I am, Jesus answered him. But I tell you from now on, you will, see, you will all see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robe. He has blasphemed, he declared. Why do we need any more witnesses? You have just heard the blasphemy. What is your verdict? Then all condemned him and said he must die. Then some of them began to spit in his face. And the men who were holding him were making fun of him. They covered his face and struck him with their fists. And some slapped him. Prophesy, you Christ, and tell us who struck you. They were asking him. They were also speaking many other blasphemies against him. Then the attendants took charge of him. And they also slapped him. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Let us arise. We profess our Christian faith with the whole Christian church on earth. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing hymn 375, verses 1 to 4, If thy beloved Son, O God. Christ has born sin. Oh. 
trust thee with all my heart. Now all my sorrow ceases. His words are binding peace in part. His blood from guilt releases. Free grace through him I now obtain. He washes me from every stain and pure I stand before him. All righteousness by works is vain. The law brings condemnation. True righteousness by faith I gain. Christ's work is my salvation. His death that perfect sacrifice Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our sermon meditation this morning is found recorded in Luke's Gospel, where we read in the 22nd chapter, verses 70 and 71. Then they all said, Are you then the Son of God? So he said to them, You rightly say that I am. And they said, What further testimony do we need? For we have heard it ourselves from his own mouth. This is the word of God. Sanctify us, O Lord, through your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. In Christ Jesus, our God and our crucified Savior, dear fellow redeemed, an inconvenient truth. Following his political, political career, a former vice president took up the cause of fighting global warming, and to that end he wrote a book entitled An Inconvenient Truth. What he intended to communicate in his book title was that everything he wrote in that book was unquestionably true. Those who refused to accept all that he wrote were simply blind to the truth, because they found the truth to be inconvenient, so they rejected it. I never read the book, so I can't really say if what he wrote is factual, true, or not. I do agree with his point that many times people disagree with the truth, even when it is clearly laid out for them, simply because they find that truth to be inconvenient. That is very frequently the case when it comes to the truth about Jesus Christ. It was certainly the truth with the Jewish high council called the Sanhedrin. As we continue our Sunday Lenten meditation series on veiled truths, we consider this morning the conclusion the Sanhedrin came to as they chose to reject and condemn Jesus for blasphemy. We have heard it ourselves from his own mouth. It is so very true that they heard the words clearly spoken by Jesus regarding his identity as the Son of God. The truth of Jesus' testimony, that was lost to them. It was veiled because their hearing was not mixed with faith. In the middle of the night, the Jewish council had assembled for an illegal trial, that trial that we read about in our Passion History lesson this morning. Trials in the dark of night were not allowed, but that didn't stop this kangaroo court from being held. It turned into a marathon set of false witnesses telling lies about Jesus, charging him with all sorts of evil things that other people do but not Jesus. Jesus didn't respond to any of these false accusations. 
That frustrated the high priest Caiaphas. The high priest asked him, saying, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. While Jesus wouldn't and didn't respond to the false accusations, Jesus did testify to the truth. This was the initial declaration of his divine nature before the high council. And their response was immediate. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. The high priest had asked the right question. He asked, hoping that he would get the answer that Jesus gave. In fact, Jesus gave a complete and truthful answer regarding his divine nature. But he declared, I am. That had great significance. Jesus is the I am. That is the one true God who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty, as he identifies himself at the beginning of Revelation. He made it clear to the entire Jewish council assembled that dark night that they would see him in his glory. They would see him as the Son of Man. Jesus would keep his human nature along with his divine nature forevermore as the Son of Man, both true God and true man. Jesus would sit at the right hand of power and come to judge, to judge them. That clear testimony should have given them pause, something for them to think about. They had their representatives watching Jesus for most of his three and a half years of public ministry. They all knew about the mighty signs and the wonders which Jesus had done. They knew the evidence that backed up Jesus' testimony. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the Blessed. A proper faith-filled response would have been to fall before Jesus in worship and repentance. As clear as this testimony had been, the truth was veiled to them. It evaded them. The truth concerning Jesus was veiled because of their unbelief. It was the inconvenient truth. They were only not, not ready to accept, but, but a truth that apart from the Holy Spirit, no one can accept. At this point, there were only a couple members of the Sanhedrin who secretly believed in Jesus. We're not sure that they were present for that dark night. The rest of them were ready to reject Jesus' testimony as being blasphemy of the highest order and find Jesus deserving of death. The words of our text were spoken in a separate meeting as the sun began to rise. To make everything legal, Caiaphas reassembled the, the council. As soon as it was day, the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, came together and led him into their council, saying, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will by no means believe. And if I also ask you, you will by no means answer me or let me go. Hereafter, the Son of Man will sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then they all said, Are you then the Son of God? So he said to them, You rightly say that I am. And they said, What further testimony do we need? For we have heard it ourselves from his own mouth. Jesus challenged them. 
He challenged them that they would not believe the truth if he testified to the truth. But they called for the truth. And so Jesus once again presented a clear and straightforward testimony of his divine nature and glory. As Jesus had said, the truth was veiled to them. As they said, they heard it from his own mouth. But their hearing was not mixed with faith. And so it was to their condemnation rather than to their salvation. In Bible class this year, we are studying the epistle to the Hebrews, where we are reminded that God in these last days has spoken to us by his Son. This was as true for the chief priests and the entire Jewish council as it was for anyone. Jesus was standing before them presenting a clear testimony concerning himself and what was to come. This was the major focus of Jesus' public ministry, that he teach the people the truth about himself and the coming of the kingdom of God. A couple of hours later, Jesus would testify before Pontius Pilate. You say rightly that I am a king, for this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. We remember well Pilate's cynical response. What is truth? What a tragic thing it is that people heard the words that came right of, out of our Savior's mouth, words that lead to eternal life, and yet they didn't hear the truth. The truth doesn't coincide with their view of righteousness, or their world view, or their personal ambitions and desires. The truth of Jesus Christ, even when it comes from his own mouth, if the hearing is not mixed with faith, and sadly and tragically, Jesus testifies to the truth concerning his divine identity. Indeed, it is the most convenient truth for us. The writer to the Hebrews exhorts us as well. God, the Holy Spirit's encouragement is still in place for us. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. The holy and inspired record brings us Jesus' words. The words that came from his own mouth. The record is faithful and his testimony is true. We have it straight from his mouth. The source of this truth of our salvation cannot get any better than that. Don't let anyone undermine your confidence in the word of God. Christ Jesus, our Lord, is the word made flesh. He came in fulfillment of all God's promises. The eternal Son is the word that created the world and all that is. He is the one who speaks to us in our day. He tells us of the forgiveness of sins and eternal life that we have in his name. We too shall see Jesus come again, sitting at the right hand of power. He will come again, and our eyes shall behold him in all his glory. His word is true, and the truth of his identity as the Son of the Blessed One lies at the very foundation of the gospel of our salvation. It was necessary for our salvation that Jesus be the very Son of God. It all comes down to the adequacy of the sacrifice that was made when Jesus suffered and died upon the cross. He shed his holy, precious blood to redeem a fallen and sinful mankind. Remember, we were not and we could not be redeemed by silver or gold. All the silver and gold and gems in the entire world could not redeem or ransom a single soul. 
It required the infinitely more precious blood of the Son of God. For the Son of God to possess blood, for the Son of God to be the sacrifice for us for our sin, it was necessary that he take on our human nature. He came into the world that he might offer his life as a sacrifice to God. The truth of Jesus' identity as the eternal Son of God is the most convenient and important of truths for us. It is our assurance that we, too, people who live a couple thousand years after Jesus' crucifixion, after Jesus spoke these words of testimony, that we, too, are redeemed by the death of the Son of God. The precious blood of the Son of God still avails before the throne of God, bringing us peace with God. This morning we are celebrating the Lord's Supper. In this sacrament, we are especially focused on the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we read the words of institution, it is as though we were once again hearing for ourselves the words as they came from our Savior's mouth. It is Jesus who says to us, take and eat. This is my body given for you. It is Jesus who says to us, take and drink. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sin. As we eat that bread and drink from that cup, we receive exactly what Jesus declared. We receive it for ourselves right from his mouth, the forgiveness of sins. We praise and thank God, the Holy Spirit, that the veil has been lifted from our hearts that we might hear the words of our Lord Jesus and know and believe that he is the Christ, the Son of the Blessed, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray. O Lord God, almighty and ever-living King of all creation and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, hear our prayers. We thank you for the matchless gift of your Son, for the unsearchable wisdom which planned for our redemption through his death in our place, and for the promise of eternal inheritance through his death. Grant that through your Son we may have your richest blessings, the forgiveness of all our sins, deliverance from death and the power of the devil, and the assurance of everlasting life. Help us faithfully to honor Christ our Lord by faith and life, by word and deed. Help us to see clearly in him the eternal Godhead, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Inspire us to love and worship him in spirit and truth. By your abounding grace, lift up your church, O God, that we may be saved from all weakness and failure and be empowered for service in your kingdom. Govern the nations of the earth so that people may live everywhere without fear and in the light of your saving gospel. Give your grace to our homes and schools that our youth may be trained for usefulness in this life and for entrance into the life which is to come. Bless all who labor with mind or hand in providing the things we need for daily living and give them the understanding that in all human toil we are accountable to you. Help us to use our gifts as your stewards and to your glory. Dear Lord, be the comforter of the suffering and afflicted the aged and those who are weak in body or spirit. Be the supplier of those in need, the protector of the fatherless and the defenseless, and the light of salvation for all people. 
We ask these things in the name of Jesus, our Redeemer. Amen. And we join in praying in his name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A reminder that we are still not yet passing the offering plate, but your offerings will be received by placing them in the, in the basket at the back of the church as you're leaving this morning. Um, also, this reminder for those who are joining us through our streaming services that your offerings may be sent directly to St. Paul's Lutheran Church at 2100 16th Street Southwest here in Austin, Minnesota. We will continue our service with the singing of the first four verses of hymn 163, The Death of Jesus Christ, Our Lord. <laughs> Evidently, I didn't proofread this page of the bulletin. The benediction will follow at the end of the service. We continue with the words of institution. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Communicants may come forward as they are directed by the ushers.
take eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take and eat the true body of Christ. Take and drink. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. May this, the true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Strengthen and preserve you in the true Christian faith uh, to life everlasting. Amen. To part in peace. Amen. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. May this, the true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true Christian faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father, fount and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. 
We beseech you not to forsake your children, but evermore to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We close with the fifth verse of 375. <laughs> thy Son, my Savior. Lord Jesus, thou my debt hast paid, and gain for me God's favor. O Holy Ghost, thou fount of grace, the good in me to thee I trace. In faith do thou preserve Sunday school and a church council meeting are scheduled to follow after the service this morning, so there will not be adult Bible class today. Catechism class is scheduled to follow after um, the council meeting and Sunday school at 1130. This coming Wednesday, we will again continue to have our midweek Lenten meditations. Um, this week, the, the theme of our midweek is Christ lives in me. So... Next Sunday, we have worship at 9.30 with Sunday school and Bible class scheduled to follow the service and catechism at 11.30. Are there any other announcements that should be made at this time? The peace of the Lord be with you all. Mm -hmm.